Hi, this video is going to discuss uh, the grep and egrep tools, but we are going to start with uh, the most simple cases, the fundamentals for those tools. And the most simple case, the use cases with those tools are what I will refer to as simple matches, uh, meaning pretty much when we are trying to, to match uh, single words or maybe a string, you know, inside of a file. We are trying to get all the lines of a given text file that are uh, containing a certain substring, okay? And these simple matches have to be um, differentiated from matches that are using actually regular expression, which we are going to look at in a follow-up video. So right now, I would like to give you a, a sort of a quick overview of uh, the, the main features of grep and egrep. Uh, so the options that we're going to discuss in this video <coughs> are <coughs> sorry are acceptable for both grep and egrep okay when we get into regular expression we will differentiate actually what is applicable to one tool and what is applicable to the other tool so for now i would like to just demonstrate real quick uh, what we can do with uh, grep and egrep okay so we have uh, we have a folder here with a data file this data file is just a regular text file uh, some information in here and a little bit more information again to make the file a bit longer all right so this is a text file I'm going to save it so what we can do with um, with grep and grep uh, we can actually sort out which one are the lines that contain a specific substring. For example, uh, basic usage, I'm going to specify grep and I'm going to say I want uh, to look for the word information and I want to look for the word information in the file named data. Okay, so here's the output, the basic output of grep. Okay, grep is telling us there are two lines that match actually this um, this uh, this keyword that you specified, okay, the substring that you specified. The two lines are the line that reads some information, and the line that reads information again to make. So you can see that the position of the, the word in the line is irrelevant, okay. And what I get from grep is the entire line. So it's a filter. I can feed some uh, some large uh, text file or some large output from another uh, tool to grep and grep is just going to filter out this uh, input line per line and display the lines that have actually the, uh, the substring that are specified. I can even um, get a grep actually to tell me which lines the information appears uh, on. So for example here line 1 is uh, some information and then one, two, three, four. You can see that line four is actually the second uh, line that had a match. Okay, so this is option dash n. Uh, I can similarly ask grep to count those lines for me. So this is a dash c option. So this time it doesn't display anymore the lines that, that had a match, uh, one or several match. By the way, you can have, let me illustrate that real quick. Uh, you can have a line that has uh, information to make. Uh, more information here okay I can have a line that has several times the word information if I grab through this then I'm going to see that uh, grab recognizes that information appears several times in the line but the output is the same so the output is all the lines that had at least a match in them okay and if I do dash n that's not going to change anything if I do dash c it's still going to tell me two as output so dash c is not going to output the lines themselves, it's just going to count the lines that match. It's equivalent um, It's equivalent, equivalent to doing a grep and then piping the output to something like the word count tool with the dash L option which instructs it to count how many lines it received um, from the, the pipe and you can see that we get exactly the same result here. So grep, grep by itself is just outputting the two lines, then those two lines are fed into a pipe and the WC uh, tool is going to count how many lines it was provided. So this is a good example of how you can obtain uh, more advanced options, you know, without necessarily implementing them in the new tools, for example, grep, but by combining it with other existing tools that are already available in your system. So um, now that we have an idea of the, the basic role of grep, the most, you know, uh, elementary usage of grep, I would like to stress out something. I would like to stress out that by default, 
grep is actually in the business of matching substrings. So let's take an example. Uh, what if here, I'm going to remove this for now, uh, I just want to do a basic match. I'm going to use inform. Okay, so here's, here's the output when I try to grep actually the substring inform. The same two lines. This time you can see that in the coloring that is outputted in the terminal, you can see that grep has match actually only the, the part that has specified in form. Um, it does not consider the first argument as being a word, uh, meaning a word that, that has spaces, you know, separators, tabs, whatnot, on its left and its right. It really, uh, grep is really looking at your file line per line and trying to match whatever you specified as first parameter as if it was a substring without any typographic com you know, consideration about whether it's a word, whether it's separated, etc. So th that's really important to understand because otherwise, you know, if you have like, uh, if you have like words that are actually a subset of other words, you can get, uh, get matches like that. Okay. For example, let's take a, a quick example. If I wanted to um, Potato. If I wanted to match, uh, um, he's here. If I wanted to match uh, potato, here are two examples where uh, potato is uh, singular, and then uh, here are some more potatoes. Okay, and this time I have, I have actually plural form. I have a singular form, right? Uh, so if I ask to match simply potato, which I'm going to do right now. It's a substring, so it's going to match the last entry. So how can I avoid this? Well, there is a, a very useful uh, option here that changes the behavior of grep without having to use, you know, we, we are going to learn how to do that with regular expressions too, but <coughs> without even going and using uh, something as complex, as complex as regular expression, we can very easily tell grep that we are looking for words with the, si the dash w option. So let's try it here. Okay, if I go and say grep, dash w uh, potato there we go so now it's looking it's looking for occurrences of your string here potato that are delimited by separators and the separator you can see here actually the example was appropriate you can see here that it can be a space that can be the end of line there's nothing here after potato but uh, um, grep understand that the end of the line is actually a good uh, a good separator, an acceptable separator as well. So is the beginning of the line. There's nothing here before potato, but it's understood that everything that comes at the beginning of the line uh, is separated pretty much from the word in the previous line. Uh, space again, I could have used a, a tab here, for example, let me insert a tab, okay. And same thing here for potato, so if I save, I just replace one of the space by a tab, that is not going to be a, a problem. You can see that the W option, the dash W option is able to tell uh, the common separators, uh, things that I use commonly as separators. All right, <coughs> so we are capable right now to match a substring. We are capable right now to match a word. Sometimes you want to actually match um, a word that is by itself on a line without anything next to it. So let's take a look at that option, that's dash x option. So I'm going to insert again, by now this text obviously doesn't mean anything anymore, but I'm adding potato here by itself, potatoes here by itself on the line. Okay, so single word on a, on a line, two occurrences. Saving my text file, and I'm going to again do, uh, well, first dash w, so you can see that uh, uh, the, the single occurrence have been matched here and now if I replace this by dash x okay all right there's only one line uh, don't remember the number line 3 is the only one that actually has uh, potato by itself so we are not matching substring here when you use the dash x option you really are saying I want uh, whatever string I specified here I want it to be the only thing on this line okay um, now let's take an example here that's interesting what if I have something like potato I guess is here um, and there potato is here as well okay well, I'm going to replace this by a space let's try to see what happens if I try to grab with a dash X potato is 
here. So I'm specifying the string, okay? I'm using the double quotes here because those spaces are actually an interesting part of what I consider to be my first parameter to grab, okay, my argument. Um, so I want to group all of this. This is the entire string I'm looking for. And you can see that this is working, okay? Dash X allows us to recognize uh, a line that has not only a single word, I didn't want you to think that it was limited to a uh, single word, it's going to be a line that consists of any string um, specifying as argument for grep here. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at <coughs> what's next. So, we these are like, I would say, these are the behavioral options, okay, because they really change uh, what uh, grep is doing for us. And they allow us uh, to do with grep things that are actually uh, usually done with um, regular expressions, okay? So right now we have, uh, we have two options here that really influence uh, the way that the grep is going, what the grep is going to, to search for, all right? Uh, so I'm going to mark them in yellow. There's another one here that's down uh, the list, actually, that is also uh, a very high level I would call it again, you know, behavioral type of option. Uh, dash V. Dash V allows us to reverse what grep is doing. So let me show you what I mean by there, by this. Let's go back to a simple uh, example here, uh, where I'm going to grep potato in the file data. So okay, I have one, two, three, four, five matches. Okay, I didn't ask for the word potato. I didn't ask for the string potato being alone. Uh, by itself on the line, okay? So I match here everything, every line that has put it to as a substring. Um, so if we look at the file, uh, we didn't match this line, we didn't match this line, uh, this one here, that's three, four, there are four lines we didn't match, okay? So what we are going to do now with the dash V option, we are going to be able to tell grep that we want as output the line of the file data which uh, do not match potato and there we go and we have one two three four lines and there is probably a blank line here there we go there's nothing on this line it's a blank line so it gets matched I'm going to remove it so we have a file that doesn't have an empty line at the end if I do this again this time one two three four okay so it's very practical it's very practical especially right now where uh, we are just exploring the rudiment of the syntax usable with grep, okay? We can very easily specify a string here and get, uh, without the dash v option, we get all the lines uh, where there is a match for that string. And with the dash v option, we get all the other lines. So if both the grep v and grep by itself will allow you to get every line in a file, okay? These are like two complementary options. So these three options uh, altogether are very, uh, I would say, fundamental, okay? Uh, they are actually, uh, they are really, um, how to say, changing the behavior of grab, okay? Now, the other options here, especially those ones uh, right there, are not so fundamental, probably, okay? Uh, these are more in the line of what I already showed you with dash n, which gives you the, the lines number, okay? And I'm going to add it so that you have a a complete summary here, so let me here add dash n shows the lines, uh, the line numbers, okay, so where there is a match, and dash c which allows you to count the lines, okay, so those options are, the remaining option are a little bit in those, uh, those lines, no pun intended, they are going to allow us to provide more information. So let's start with actually, well let's get rid of ignore cases, because this one <coughs> This one maybe is still a little bit um, on the, how to say, on the behavior side. Um, I don't know. Uh, dash i allows you to ignore cases. Cases as in uppercase and lowercase character. So right now in our file we add, we add potato and potatoes um, that were actually all the same, okay? Uh, if I replace here, <coughs> lowercase t by, uh, let's use it on this actually, because we have two of them. So I replace uh, upper a lowercase t by uppercase t in this line, in this word potato here, and here I have one that doesn't have this. So if I do a grep of potato, 
by default it's looking at an exact match okay which means potato spelled all lowercase is not the same as potato spelled with uppercase t okay and actually here let me check real quick did i do a yes i did a, a little type over here potato uh potato data oh, what's going on here hold on well let's go back and uh, try here saving the file actually that's what's going on so let me try again if i do grab potato i get that ah, that's better i get only the matches that are all lowercase okay if i do now grab potato and i use uppercase spelling there we go i get only the uppercase spelling so by default grab like most unix and linux tools and like the shell itself um, is actually case sensitive so a lowercase and an uppercase version of the same letter are not the same thing uh, this is where the dash i option comes into play and when you specify dash i you are saying ignore this case sensitiveness uh, thing so you can see that now if i specify potato with uppercase t's it matches everything and similarly if i go back to the lowercase t it's going to be the same thing Okay, it matches everything because of the dash i option. All right, so this is another this is another option that kind of changes the behavior. I would say uh, we already talked about this one, so I'm going to mark it off our list. Now the remaining options, there are three. I mean, the four of them actually kind of work together. Okay, so we are going to we are going to use we are going to start with the dash r option, which is uh, allowing us to actually specify entire folders. So to do that, that I'm going to create a folder called some data. Okay, I'm going to move my file data inside uh, some data, which is going to probably drive my editor a little nuts here. So I'm going to close this. There we go, and I will reopen it. Okay, and then inside some data, <coughs> inside some data. I'm going to create um, another file with some other data in here with the word ah, typo, information and potato, not mentioning potatoes, uh, and then just to have more matches, potato information by themselves. Okay, I'm going to save this data dot more. All right. So now, if I look inside my uh, some data folder here, I have two files: data, data dot more. So what I can do with uh, this option, this uh, grab option here, dash r, I can actually ask, um, I can actually ask grab to operate on a folder, okay? And I can ask it to search again for potato. I'm just putting uh, double quotes here; they're not necessary, but. There we go. And this is a default behavior. The default behavior is I am going to display for you uh, some data slash, so the name of the folder, okay, slash data.more, the name of the file, and then the line that I matched. And you can easily separate, you know, which uh, lines uh, the each of the match is coming from. So this is the dash R option is going to go inside a folder. If this folder has also subfolders with more data file in there, uh, this is going to, to work just the same way, okay? So let me illustrate this for you. If I do cp-r and I'm making a copy, uh, don't worry about the detail of the syntax here, but I'm making a copy of some data inside some data itself, uh, and I call that even more data, so it's a folder, okay? Uh, okay, yeah, of course, this is not really smart. So even more data has been created. The files that have been moved, I have moved at least one of them. I'm going to move the second one. So CP copy data inside even more data. There we go. Now we have uh, we have twice the same uh, the same data file. So it's not great, okay? But that will do for this example. Uh, if I use again, I'm going to use the upper row to fish for that grep line that I used, so I'm going up the history, there we go. So if I use again a uh, grep-r, you can see with this example that it's not only going inside the some data folder, but for any subfolder found inside some data, it's going to go also 
inside that subfolder and inside all the files that are inside that subfolder and if there are more subfolders you get the point okay it's a recursive descent in um, all the subfolders starting with some data all right so this is a base um, the base option here now we we do have uh, we do have more options here that are going to allow us to do pretty much the, the same that we did without and with the dash V okay so list files with matches this is going to be really what we have been uh, doing here so I'm going to use LR LR okay so recursive and list file with matches and there we go we get the information that we already had which was uh, all the files matching but we get rid of all the lines that were also produced okay so without the dash l option we get actually the name of the files let's compare here and we get for each file all the lines that are matching okay so you see here data.more has three matches data has three matches and so on and so forth uh, with the l option we pretty much say that we care only about identifying the files uh, that have a match so that may be a very good uh, very good use case here if you are looking into a large amount of, uh, of uh, log files and you are looking for keywords such as alert you know um, and then you you do not care to see all the lines right now you just want to see which log files have one or more in uh, lines matching that uh, that substring that you specified well that would be typically the use case for this uh, this option of grep so we have uh, dash l lowercase l and we have also dash l uppercase L okay and this one is opposite so we want to know the files the names of the files that do not actually have any match so to do that I'm going to have to uh, to play a little bit with with my files here so I'm going to add a, a new word here somewhere <coughs> and this one is so I'm going to have the word super uh, super super will work super potato but you know super will work uh, it's nowhere else to be found so I'm saving my file and then I'm going to the next data here and I'm going to use super as well in here so now if I do a grab dash R and I look for super this is what I get okay so there are only two files the two files that are directly under some data who match that string. If I do LR, I get the name of those files. Okay. Now, if I do dash uppercase LR, I am going to get the opposite information. I'm going to get the name of the files that do not have actually this string here. So you can see that the files are inside even more data. Okay, so the copy I made that didn't have super is still here. And then you can see something weird here that I'm going to explain in a second. We have two files here in some data that are named data.more tilde and data tilde. And I didn't create those files, right? So let's do a ls-l inside some data. And you can see as yes, those files exist. What are they? Uh, they are an artifact of using a text editor. Most text editor in Linux are going to provide you with some, um, how to say, some backup version okay so those backup versions are named with a tilde following the name of the file so data tilde is a backup uh, version of data data.more tilde is a backup version of data.more so as I modified my file here you see that I added super right well those uh, those file with a tilde at the end are copies of data and data more before I made that modification so it's it's a way to you know to have a backup in case something goes wrong and you erase your file right uh, but nonetheless those files are still lingering around uh, so I'm going to erase them right now and by the way there is one here as well so I'm going to erase to clean up things okay so right now I cleaned up my folder so if I look inside some data there's no more tilde backup file okay if I look inside even more data the subfolder inside some data uh, it's clean because I never edited those files, right? I just copied them as they were. So now I can do again my grep. There we go. So first lowercase l, alright, and now to compare uppercase l. Alright, so the word super, the substring super, appears in some data folder data.more and data inside of it 
Okay, these are the two files that are edited here. And then the string super does not appear in, well, it does appear on those guys, so we're not going to see them on this list. But if we go into some data, even more data, and the two copies here of our original file, these original files do not have the word super in them. Therefore, grep uppercase lr show me the name of those files. Okay, so it's the same logic than you know using or not using dash v. You want to reverse what uh, what is done for you. The last option I'm going to discuss is the dash s option. So the dash s option is useful when combined to dash r. Okay, generally, and it's useful when you are trying to grab through things that you might not be allowed to access. For example. If I am looking for a uh, grep uh, of uh, the substring, I don't know, um, I don't remember if we are going to have matches with that, but let's try with alert, okay? And to increase my chance to have a match, I'm going to tell it to ignore uppercase, lowercase differences. So I'm trying to grab, to grep, sorry, for uh, the substring alert in actually uh, in the root folder. This is where I'm going to go. So the root folder is specified with slash, okay? And if I do this like this, um, well, actually, that's not going to be appropriate because I'm not recursively descending. If I do this like this with the R option, I want to pretty much grab that string everywhere on my hard drive because everything is mounted under the root directory, which is named slash, okay? Uh, so uh, I'm trying to, s to search for my entire, uh, all the file in my hard drive. Okay, uh, to search for that string. So if I do this, you can see already what's happening. Okay, I'm going to stop it with Control C because it's going to take a while. Um, but some files are binary files, so grep doesn't really work well with binary files. It's meant to work with uh, text files. But then most of the time, what we get is permission denied, permission denied, permission denied. Um, these are these are slash var uh, slash log files, so they are meant to be logs uh, produced by certain uh, services on our machine, okay? They are not necessarily readable uh, by everybody, okay? Especially the archived uh, uh, versions, the .gz, uh, apparently the access right to those files has been locked so that only the super user uh, can access them. So that's not really working great, okay? Uh, well, this is where the, uh, the dash s option comes into play. So dash, e dash s option allows you to su suppress those error messages, okay? So you still got inf get informed here that you have been trying to grab, you know, some files that are actually uh, binary files. That's totally different, okay? But then all of those messages that we had about, I'm going to stop it right now, all those messages that we had about permission denied have been suppressed. That's what dash s is doing. And you can see that we have actually some, uh, some matches here. Uh, email alerting has been uh, found in slash var backups tpkg.stasis.0, okay, so that's a text file and this is the line that contains actually um, the substring alert, okay. So typically if, uh, if I don't want to have like a huge log like this, I could actually combine uh, to all of those things, something like, uh, uh, well, let's look, what is the option that would be appropriate here? L. L would be appropriate, okay? I want to know the file name with matches. I don't want to know all the file names that didn't match because I'm ac expecting there's a lot of them. Uh, but there we go, right? I don't want to see the detail. I don't want to see the multiple lines that are matched in every file. I just want to be made aware of the files that actually have at least one line where the substring alert has been matched. And you can see here, uh, this is actually a much more readable <coughs> output, something that we can definitely work with. I can take a look at this, you know, think about it, uh, think what, uh, what, uh, which one of those files is actually relevant to whatever I'm trying to do, and then go explore the file manually uh, by hand to just uh, figure out exactly what's happening. So that's going to, to wrap it up for, for this video on just the fundamental um, features of grep. I um, hope that you enjoy the video and if you have any question you know uh, that you can post on the forum and you can reach out to me by email. I will be glad to re-explain some of the things that were not clear uh, or uh, you know, provide you with more information if you are curious about other options that we didn't discuss in the video. Thank you for listening.